Welcome to Living with Victory Ministries podcast. Today's podcast is brought to you by Teague's Grocery and Corner Cafe at 130 Soco Road in Maggie Valley, North Carolina. In a moment, Lorene and Tony Giorgio. So if life has left you kicking up dust, keep listening, keep looking up and grab your umbrella, get ready to sing in the Welcome to Living with Victory, proving life isn't about waiting for the storms to pass. It's about learning to dance in the rain, giving you peace, power, and joy through perseverance and faith, above all, in Jesus Christ. Hi, this is Tony Giorgio, and now, without further delay, I want to introduce my co-host, my lovely wife, Laureen, with the topic of the day and the verse for the day. Hey, Laureen. Hi. I'm so glad to be here today. I hope everyone is having a great Sunday. Today's topic is, can we love the unlovely? I know this is something that everybody has to deal with. We are surrounded by different types of people. Matthew five forty four through 48 But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you to show that you are the children of your father who is in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the wicked and on the good and makes the rain fall upon the upright and wrongdoers alike. For if you love those who love you, what reward can you have? Do not even the tax collectors do that? And if you greet only your brethren... What more than others are you doing? Do not even the Gentiles, the heathen, do that. You therefore must be perfect, growing into complete maturity of godliness in mind and character, having reached the proper height of virtue and integrity, as your heavenly Father is perfect. I know that the subject of loving the unlovely is not very popular. Let's be honest. There are people in our lives that grade us the wrong way. They could be neighbors, people we work with, total strangers, and yes, even people we love. God puts these people in our lives for a reason, to love when they don't deserve love, just as he loves us when we don't deserve his love. As imperfect as they are, we are no different than they are at times. Pretty hard to believe, but we can be the difficult ones. <laughs> <laughs> Who is without sin? Let uh. him cast the first stone. I'm sure we rub people the wrong way, too. Can we love these people that hurt us and sometimes seem impossible? Yes, we can. Not on our own, but with the power and the help of the Holy Spirit. With his spirit, we can follow his commandments. Ephesians three sixteen through 21. May he grant you out of the rich treasury of his glory to be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power in the inner man by the Holy Spirit himself indwelling your innermost being and personality. May Christ through your faith actually dwell, settle down, abide, make his permanent home in your hearts. May you be rooted in love and founded securely on love that you may have the power and be strong to apprehend and grasp with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth of it, that you may really come to know practically through experience for yourselves the love of Christ which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience that you may be filled through all your being unto all the fullness of God may have the richest measure of the divine presence and become a body wholly filled and flooded with God himself. Wow, I I don't know about you, but that excites me. (laughs) Because I know that I would not be able to love someone who has hurt me so badly without God's help. 
This really isn't a suggestion to love your enemies and pray for them. This is what he expects us to be doing. When you start praying for the person that has hurt you, especially when you don't feel like praying, but choose to, God will honor that prayer, and pretty soon your emotions will catch up to that choice to pray. I could really speak for myself because every time I choose to follow what God's commandments are, and believe me, God and I have a talk. Lord, you know, I just want to smack them right upside the head. You know my heart. (laughs) I'm not ready to love them, but I choose to pray for them. I choose to love them, and I know my feelings will catch up because in Proverbs 16, 7, it says, when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. We are to grow and mature in him so we can show people his character and love through us. I know this is not easy at times. Our flesh wants to scream, who do they think they are treating me this way? (laughs) But God's word says, love endures long and is patient and is kind. That's 1 Corinthians 13, 4. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes, is ready to believe the best of every person, It's hopes and faithless under all circumstances and adores everything without weakening. That's 13.8, 1 Corinthians. Tony has a story about this. This goes back quite, quite a ways when we were really involved in major undertakings with the uh, ministry things occurred as they always do the devil pops his little head up you know to make sure that you don't feel too comfortable in those days i hadn't the strength in christ that i did now i I sure didn't we almost lost the entire ministry because of what was going on and what some people were doing against us from within. We consequently pretty much cleared the decks and and got things resolved to a certain point. And I, I really had this animosity toward this person who spearheaded this so-called takeover, you might say. Every time I thought of this person, it was almost sickening and I would never go near him just wanted to write them off. And when I thought of them, I didn't think very nice things. I used to go to a men's luncheon in a Presbyterian church hosted one day by Steve Brown, theologian, author. He's on the air, my friend. And he's talking exactly about this situation and that it was ungodly, that it wasn't of the spirit. As I look over two or three tables, who do I see in the room at the luncheon but this person that I hadn't seen for a while and I couldn't stand and and I'm listening to Steve and Steve is telling me and everybody there at the luncheon that we should forgive these people. We should not have the animosity. It's not Christ-like. Fill yourself with the spirit and you can do it. And I'm looking at him And I'm saying, oh, I'd like to be filled with God. And he's looking at me, and this this goes on. And I I can't go anywhere. I'm locked in this room. I'm at a luncheon, a Christian men's luncheon. And here he is, you know. As, As Steve kept talking and we kept looking at each other, I kept saying, what in the world am I doing? Why am I sitting here listening to this and looking at him wanting to really throw him off a roof or something, God forgive me. But that that was my thoughts at the time because he really hurt us badly, cost us a lot of grief. At the end of it all, inside of me was this, this conviction by the Holy Spirit. I was there for a purpose that day, and Steve was talking about this issue for a purpose. But I have to say that he did not know what was going on. He was really convicting me. I kept saying to myself, you know, this is wrong. At the end, like I said, everybody got up and talked. And and the spirit, oh, praise the Lord for the spirit. You talk about a living being. 
the Holy Spirit inside of me said, go over and shake his hand. And I'm saying, oh, no, you don't. <laughs> no way. I don't care. And he's looking over at me. I'm a, and I'm saying, oh, you can't be. You've got to be kidding. Do you know what he did to me? Do you know what? I, and we're having this argument, see? Mm -hmm. And it ain't working because I'm losing because <laughs> more I'm arguing, arguing with the spirit, I'm uh, I'm being convicted. Of, no, go over there. Get over there. Mm -hmm. That's all I kept hearing. So I, I got to go. I, I just have to go because I don't feel right anymore. That's it. And I walk over, and I hadn't seen him in such a while, and I said, hey, how are you doing? And I extended my hand, and he smiled, and we shook hands, and it, it was over with. That was because of the conviction that I had, that I had to be who I was. And let me tell you, I went up to Steve, and I told him what the situation was. He laughed so hard, I don't think he could breathe. <laughs> but remember, that's the way it's done. I never saw the guy again, but I had peace with it. The point is that God started compassion, okay? And this was his ministry, and he could not have that strife in his ministry. God does not like strife in us if we are saying we are his. So we have to forgive. That's why his commandment says to pray for your enemies and to love them. So just just remember that, folks. You know, you got to go if you're... If you're in the Bible, the Holy Spirit is a living, true person inside of you. Follow him. Now, can we love the unlovely? Oh, yes, we can love them, care about them, and pray for them with God's help if we allow him in. He is the power behind all difficult things we can accomplish. Maybe through the love we show the unlovely, they will learn to love Amen. And begin to love the unlovely. Wouldn't that put a smile on God's face? Sure would. It sure would. Well, I think we're out of it. So, hey, remember our ministries in your giving, please. Oh, yes, especially this year. And this is Tony. And Laureen. Saying, you keep dancing in the rain. Tell your friends. And remember, Jesus is your umbrella. And if you don't know Jesus... Get to a Bible-based church and learn. You can become a Living with Victory Ministries patron with a monthly donation of $5 or more. Simply go to livingwithvictory.podbean.com. That's livingwithvictory.podbean.com. And click on the PayPal button. Thanks for listening. So if life has left you kicking up dust, keep listening, keep listening.